G'day coppers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Block Up's Full Driving, we're checking out the solar generator from Jackery, the 2000 plus. All the inputs, all the outputs, all tested right to the maximum. First up though, we'll deal with the elephant in the room, the cost. Let's have a look at that. And here's the price. On the left hand side here we've got the price in AUD, so it's Australian dollars as of now, which is November 2023. And the Jackery 2000 plus kit, so that comes with two 100 watt solar panels in addition to the unit itself. Well, that comes in at not inconsiderable $4,199. Now, full disclosure, this unit's provided to me by Jackery for review. Okay, moving on. So we know the price of entry, well, it isn't cheap. But do the specifications justify the price? First up, let's check out the weight. And here's how much it weighs. On the left-hand side here, we've got the weighting kilograms ranging from zero right through to 30 kilograms. So how much did the Jackery weigh? Well, it tipped the scales at 26.9 kilograms. So it's not exactly a lightweight. So not only is the price reasonably hefty, so is the unit itself. But do the specifications justify it? Let's check out what the manufacturer says before we get into the testing about the specifications for this unit. And here we go, here's the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus model. There's the base price without any solar, but what we're probably interested in is the technical specification. So we'll skadoodle down to there and we'll have a bit of a look see. So we've got the main power button here, we've got a carport, so that's where you plug in your cigarette lighter socket, power devices, uh, travel buddy, etc. Then we've got USB, fantastic USB A and USB C. Not only that, we've got PD and QC, so that's your fast charge for your laptops. Or your Android devices, QC is a Qualcomm standard, usually used in Android devices because Apple don't pay for the licensing. <laughs> okay, we've got the little DC button there, and these can all be operated remotely by the app. And we've got three AC, so you can plug a 2400 watt device and still have a little bit of headroom left because of a 3000 watt AC inverter. And we'll be testing all that as well. And of course, you've got a little bit of a display up here, so it tells you how much battery capacity is left, whether the uh, Bluetooth operating, all that sort of stuff. Okay, let's have a look at the actual specifications. So the battery capacity is 2,042 watt hours. Now, the reason they're using watt hours as opposed to amp hours is because it's a 48 volt device and if they said it was a low watt hours, it'd be no good for marketing. <laughs> Plus, there's a more accurate way of measuring battery capacity is watt hours. But it's equivalent of about a 12 volt battery at about 140 amp hours as an equivalency. Okay, so cell chemistry, lithium iron phosphate. That's the one to look out for, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, probably the best compromise you can get right at the moment in between weight and capacity and safety uh, 4000 cycles because it lasts so damn long to 70 percent capacity uh, the ac output 3000 watt max so that's continuous and 6000 watt surge that will surge for inductive devices like turning on your ac or turning on uh, something like a, a drop saw or things like that then we've got the carport of course 12 volt 10 amps uh, quick charge QC as I was saying before we have USB for days absolutely fantastic then we look at the DC input the one we're interested in of course is the car charge 11 volt to 17.5 volt 8 amp max and we'll be delving into that a little further there's all the weights and the size charge time so we'll be testing this 1.7 hours it says charge 0 to 100% through the AC adapter and 25 hours for 12 volt charge that's that's a little bit Okay, and we go charge temperature 0 to 45. That's not going to be an issue around where I am. And there's discharge temp minus 10 to 45 degrees Celsius. What's in the box? So what we have is the Jackery unit itself. We've got a 12 volt adapter. We've got a, uh, that's a mains charger as well. And of course, we've got the solar converter as well. Okay, that's what's in the box. That's the manufacturer's specifications. Well, the specifications are class leading. A 3000 watt full sine wave inverter, DC out and USB for days, including power delivery and QC, which is unusual and fantastic for us Android users. But what about testing those specifications? Let's check out the results for the output. And here's the discharge performance. On the left hand side here, we've got the time in hours. Here's a 10 amp DC discharge and here's a 500 watt AC discharge. Let's have a look at the DC discharge first. And that came in and lasted at 10 amps for 14 hours, 15 minutes and 22 seconds. Not too bad. That works out to a total of 1,686 watt hours, and that's 
83% of the rated capacity. So the unit itself operates at about 48 volts. So you get conversion losses when you convert it down to about 12 volts. My only comment so far is when it was drawing that full 10 amps, the voltage dropped from about 13.6 volts at 0 amps down to less than 12 volts actually. It was about 11.8 volts, which is no good if you're running a resistive load. Okay, now for the AC discharge. The AC discharge lasted 3 hours, 25 minutes and 2 seconds. Pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. So 1,685 watts. And again, that's about 83% of rated capacity. Pretty happy with the discharge performance. You can't ask for too much more. Now we're going to have a look at the AC waveform from the inverter under load. Now you can see the mushy meter here outputting to the mobile phone through here. And we're getting 230 volts. And we've also got the oscilloscope, so we're going to have a look at the waveform there. But unfortunately, oscilloscopes don't enjoy 240 volts AC RMS <laughs> thrown into them. So we're having to use an attenuator, but we're dropping the voltage off a fair bit in order to see it on the screen there. All right, so what we'll do first is we'll have a look and we'll push it out about 230 volts. I'm going to put a little bit of load on it. And what I'll do is I'll make sure the screen's fired up. And as you can see, we're sitting at 67%. And I'll turn on the heater and see what we can get. Unfortunately, I won't be able to run both through the one plug up to 3,000 watts because we're limited to 2,400 watts. There we go. We've got 1,000 watts. And then we've got 2,000 watts running through this adapter here. And you can see that's pulling about 8 amps at about 230 volts. All right, let's have a look at the screen and we'll see how clean that waveform is. All right, so looking at the waveform at the peak here, it's a little bit dirty and at the transition point and at the bottom there. Not too bad though. Let's check out what our frequency is. So we go measure and of course that's horizontal and frequency. And there we go. We're seeing it at 50 hertz, so that's great. As you can see, still it's a little bit dirty up the top there and a little bit dirty down the bottom there. Seeing it about 2,000 watts. And we'll see if we can get the screen to light up again. There we go, and we're measuring 2,000 watts of load on the mushy meter. All right, let's really crank it up. Let's get it over 3,000 watts. I'm going to turn on the heat gun. It's going to be a bit noisy. Apologise for that, and we'll see what the waveform looks like. All right, so we're sitting at about 3,600 watts. It won't last all that long at this current load. Let's have a quick look at the waveform. A little bit dirty at the top, a little bit dirty at the bottom. The transition point is not too bad. Still holding 50 hertz, but the main thing is we're still holding about 230 volts. We'll see how long it lasts at 3,600 watts. It won't be, won't be long, I'd say. <laughs> we'll start complaining. There we go, and it's flicked out. What we'll do now is we'll actually reconfigure it to be a little bit less than 3,000 watts, and we'll see if it's uh, happy with that. And we'll start cranking up. So now we're putting. 1600 watts and let's throw in another thousand watts with the heater and there we go we got 2645 watts and that should sustain that current draw no problems and i've tried it before and it seems to be pretty good let's have a look at the voltage the voltage is sitting at about 230 volts no problems beauty all right the ac inverter seems to be working like an absolute champion. Well, the AC output is absolutely fantastic. It supports that full 3,000 watts of load without cutting back the voltage like the X-Boost on some other brands. The USB, again, absolutely fantastic. It'll cover anything you need, laptops, phones, iPhones, Androids, absolutely everything. The DC, however, well, it cut back the voltage to down around about 11.8 volts under that full 10 amps. So if you're using a resistive load, something like a, a travel buddy, for instance, a 12 volt oven, well, you're gonna get reduced performance and that's a bloody shame. But what about when we're charging it back up? Let's check out the results for that. Now let's have a look at the charge performance. We've got the timer now is on left hand side here, rating from zero right through to 30. We've got the 12 volt charge here and the 240 volt charge here. Now the 12 volt charge was actually run on 13.8 volts out of a power supply. So it's equivalent to the sort of voltage you get from your car when you're driving. Okay, and it took, wow, 29 hours, 58 minutes, and 57 seconds. 
Now that works out to be 2,940 watt hours over that near 30 hours, and that's 144% of rated capacity. So 44% extra, almost half extra energy you needed to put into it to get it fully charged. What about AC performance? AC performance, completely empty to completely full, 3 hours, 15 minutes and 15 seconds. That's pretty good. And 2,323 watt hours, and that's 114% of rated capacity. AC charge performance is good. DC charge performance on that 13.8 volts, well, what do we say? Now let's have a look at that AC charge in a little bit more detail. On the left hand side here we've got the charge input in watts ranging from 0 right through to 2000. And on the bottom here we've got the time in hours. So let's check it out. Okay so for the first, oh about half an hour or so, we got a full 2000 watts in it. And then it starts dropping back to about 1750 watts. To about the three quarter of an hour mark. And then it maintains 500 watts right through to about the two and a quarter hour mark. And then drops back again to about 350 watts or thereabouts. And stays there for a little while and then finally finishes off at about 200 watts. So that's a one, two, three, four, five stage charger. Okay, let's have a look at the data. So, firstly, again, just like before, three hours, 15 minutes, and 15 seconds from completely empty to completely full. And the average voltage, 234 volts, that's coming out the mains wall socket. And the average current was 3.1 amps. That's over the duration of the charge. But our maximum current was 8.8 .8 amps. And obviously, that's right up here at our maximum 2,000 watts. What our input? 2323 two, watt hours. So we need to put in an extra 14% energy. Not too bad in my books. Pretty efficient. So when it comes to charging this unit from your AC wall socket, from completely empty to completely full, three and a quarter hours. And that's completely reasonable. But what about the DC charging? Jackery... Jackery, Jackery, nearly 30 hours. That's completely unreasonable. And look, Jackery isn't the only company guilty of this. Others that are well known are just as guilty. Guys, we need a higher amperage DC input to charge these things up. No two ways about it. Solar isn't going to work all the time. It's completely overcast today and we'll be getting next to nothing into this machine. We need to be able to plug it into an Anderson plug in our car and charge at 40 or 50 amps. And here's a 100 watt solar panel. It's actually very well constructed, I must say. Monocrystalline, so that's fantastic. But let's check out on an overcast day exactly how much energy we're putting back in. And out of a potential 100 watts, we're getting 24 watts back in. Good old Victoria, eh? <laughs> that's all there is to it. Now, it does run an app, so let's have a look at that. Now, let's check out the Jackery app. So if we tap on the app there, it follows up. And it already recognizes the machine, obviously, because I've had this in there before. We can tap on that, and you can see it's got 78% charge in there. Now, I've attached a 500 watt halogen light to the AC output, but you can see at the moment there's no output at all there. But if we tap on the AC, and it loads up. Okay, and there's a little bit of a delay in between the app firing up and the light responding. The light's now responded, and we have to wait a second or two, and there we go, 495 watts. And it gives you a time estimate of how long it'll take to discharge. And it will slowly work its way down. But you can see 230.8 volts, 50 hertz. And we're down to about 3.2 hours. If we go up to the settings, you can see from the top, scan to share device. There's a QR code on the device. Edit the name, change settings from fast charge, battery settings, so on and so forth. You can read right down there. And we'll also do a firmware upgrade in the app, which is always nice. Okay. And that's basically the app. So what do we think in the end? Well, the 3000 watt inverter, it works like a pillar. Induction cooking, air fryers, boiling that kettle, hair dryers, absolutely fantastic. The solar, again, works great, but you need lots of solar. I'm talking more than 100 watts to actually get some current back into this unit and increase that battery capacity. The DC output, drops voltage a bit it could maintain a little higher voltage i'd like to see an anderson on the front of it and then look jackery aren't the only company guilty of this many others are i'd like to see 40 or 50 amps of output and 40 or 50 amps of input when it comes to charging the unit because like i said charging it off your car 30 hours that's that's not workable and solar's not going to be around all the time i'm getting no solar today because it's completely overcast other than those things, well, look, the decision will be yours. I'll put a link down in the description. There's also a discount running at the moment. 
Guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.